Good morning and greetings from the city of Saratoga and the, uh, the wonderful event that we have here today which is in its 85th year. The women of the Foothill Club have been in charge of that. We're from here, we're marching up to Madronia. We're now at Blaney Plaza and we're marching to Madronia and Madronia has been our cemetery in Saratoga for 159 years and we will remember today all those wonderful people who have kept our freedoms intact and who have served us and have come home to be part of their community for many years to come so thank you very much color guard advance pleased to see so many people here today who share our value of honoring those who have given so much to keep this nation and its people free. It is such a great honor for me to be here today and to welcome you. Uh, I have been a neighbor of Madronia for 32 years and it's uh, really incredible for me to think that here today I am representing the city. A boy was uh, died and this was declared a hallowed ground in 1854. So for 159 years people have been buried here including over 1,000 service members. It is those 1,000 that we remember today. I wanted to tell you one small story about one of those service members. There's a large redwood tree behind me that has a very full trunk. And in the trunk is the tombstone of, I believe it's John Puroy, who died in 1919. His father, he came home from World War I and he couldn't, he did not recover. And um, his father planted a tree over his grave and now that there's only a small piece of the grave showing. So if you have a chance, take a look at that. On a warm spring day in May 1868, Commander of the Grand Army of the Republic of the United States, General John Logan, issued an order to establish a day of remembrance for all those who had fallen in battle during the Civil War. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. The poppies that bind the royal sprays are inspired by the poem written by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, a Canadian doctor who served in World War I. After experiencing the devastation of battle for a mere 17 days, Lieutenant Colonel McRae was moved to share a moment's impression after a terrific battle and the loss of a fellow officer and good friend. In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row that mark our place, and in the skies the larks, still bravely singing, fly scarce heard amid the guns below. I would like to recognize the service of the 130,000 service men and women who were interred where they fell in 24 American military cemeteries overseas. Visit one the next time you go abroad. I also want to recognize the service of several World War II veterans, some of whom you know. Els Welch served on the USS Johnson, which was sunk during the Battle of Leyte Gulf perhaps the largest naval battle in history and the turning point of the war in the Pacific. He later taught at Los Gatos High School. Miles Rankin 
served on the St. Lowe, which was also in the Battle of Lake de Gulf and was the first ship sunk by a kamikaze pilot. Miles served again during the Korean War, became a realtor, and was instrumental in the preservation of Hakone. Willis Peck, a member of the 20th Armor Division, one of three divisions that liberated Dachau concentration camp in 1945. After the war, he studied journalism and law, edited, became an editor at the Mercury News, and Sarah took as historian. George Cooper, my father, is here today. A mining engineer by training, he flew 82 missions in P-47s, interdicting German supply lines and providing air cover before and during the Normandy invasion and breakout, Eisenhower's flight to Paris, Patton's drive across France, the Battle of the Bulge, and the crossing of the Rhine. After the war, he became chief research test pilot at Ames Research Center, was a Boy Scout leader for 14 years, and started making wine. <laughs> I was living in San Jose on the wait list for the National Guard, trying to stay in school and coming home with my first legal six-pack of beer. <laughs> the thick brown envelope from the Selective Service Board told me to report two weeks later. As a result, I extended for another tour and was assigned to Vinh Binh province, closer to Saigon with a security situation that was not as good as in Bok Lu. But from my perspective, the progress of pacification and securing the countryside was real. In January 1970, with my three years of active duty about to end and anti-war protests back home, I joined another lieutenant to return home a different way. We traveled west through Asia, Europe, and Africa. Over a year later, I was back in Saratoga. After 20 months as a MACB advisor, then seeing 25 un other countries at ground level, I wanted to serve again the United States overseas. With encouragement from Burton, Brazil, I returned to school. The GI Bill was worth $220 a month. I lived with my parents the first year back, and I remember being spit upon by a co-ed at college because I was a Vietnam veteran. Three years later, with a degree in international relations, I joined the Foreign Service. More specifically, the clandestine service of the Central Intelligence Agency. After the Cold War ended, I returned to Saratoga, this time with my young family, Doris, Katrine, and Sophia. Like Els, Miles, Wills, Russ, and George, and on behalf of 130,000 interned veterans overseas, my fellow veterans who are still alive, and those on active duty, I thank everyone for the opportunity to serve this wonderful country. Thank you. As our veterans return from their trials of war, we are all morally obligated to provide our support, love, and understanding. Today, as we continue to remember those who have lost their lives, let's not forget the military veterans with us today by giving them the very best we have to offer. As Jonas Salk says, the reward for work well done is the opportunity to do more. Thank you. goodness of our veterans who served in wartime and peace, the goodness of a great nation. <laughs>